Hey everyone, welcome to Jason's review of Carrion on the Switch. Carry On is a game that many of us have been waiting for. It is a reverse horror experience where you are the monster and it is up to you to break out of the facility that's housing you, consume your captors to grow in strength and create chaos in such a way that makes you feel like a horror movie villain straight out of the 80s. But is this experience from Phobia Game Studio and Devolver Digital worth your hard earned dollars? Let's find out. In Carry On you play as a grotesque monster that looks like a blended zoo but with no hair in sight, just a lovely ball of flesh, teeth and veins and some tentacle like arms and bloodthirsty eyes, ok never mind, it is a disgusting creature. The story communicates a very simple narrative that contradicts horror stories that have been told before it for decades. You are the boss basically and it is up to you to just kill just about every human in the laboratory, military grade personnel as well. You see, you awake in a container that can no longer contain you and once you are free from its restrictions, the facility becomes your canvas to paint blood on. This is not a story that will end well, there is no plot of revenge and there are no antagonists to feud with, you are the antagonist and everyone you are killing in the game is trying to stop you from escaping so that you will not cause any further damage. It is a tough story to swallow but it is a hell of a ride. Each passing area gets more and more intense as security measures are increased and you make your way closer to the exit. This is a very unique video game title that pays homage to stories like Who Goes There, also known as The Thing. This is a story that leaves a horrific sense of reality in your stomach, because in a worst case scenario something like this could happen and the outcomes are never painted positively. I absolutely love this story in the same way that I love the novella Who Goes There. There is this tension within me that is both against the main character and with the main character and that is an exhilarating feeling that I do not come across often enough. For an indie game with a seemingly simple premise, this is an excellently done story that communicates its direction so clearly with no words and presents you with a horrible monster that you want to see win. Carry On to my surprise is a metroidvania game at its core. You are tasked with traversing the monster from one area to the next to earn progressive power ups that will aid you in your rampage but Carry On, unlike some other major metroidvania titles does not boast a map to refer to and I have to be honest at first I was disappointed and kept finding myself asking why can't I look at a map but I quickly realised that this is not a game that encourages 100% gameplay. It wants you to discover and rediscover at your own pace without depending on a map and I have to admit by the time I had cleared the game I was disappointed in myself that I even asked for a map earlier on. Another unique thing about Carry On is that you are a gelatinous flesh blob that is able to crawl up walls and ceilings right from the get go and swimming is something that you can do naturally without adaptation. The monster starts off dangerous and progressively gets more and more so until you are an incredibly powerful threat. Controlling the monster is a double edged sword. In the earlier stages your size is not such a problem so moving through corridors and using abilities is quite easy with dual stick controls. However, as you enlarge moving can become quite problematic especially with tighter areas and aiming certain abilities can be confusing as to where on the body they are originating from. Although I found these problems annoying at times I cannot help but appreciate how realistic the struggle is for such a large and awkwardly shaped monster. Progressive power ups are spread throughout the various stages and are held within containers similar to the ones you initially hatched out of. These abilities range from shooting webs at your enemies and switches to shooting your tentacles like spikes across the screen but I would be lying if I did not have a favourite. As you can tell I am a huge fan of the thing and about midway through carry on you get the ability to infect and take over humans on the screen and control them. I found myself using this one way more than I probably should have but it was just so much fun turning humans against themselves. Controlling humans felt very familiar to something like The Way Remastered. A bit clunky at times but it works well. In addition to the progressive power ups there are 9 somewhat hidden containers spread throughout the game uh, that give additional enhancements that strengthen the monster like an extra grabbing tentacle or stronger echo location but these are not necessary to clear the game. The challenges are fun little easter eggs to give the players something more to do as they make their way through the game. One of the most incredible points of the game is the unique approach to puzzling by using a bizarre set of power ups. Like I already said the monster is pretty capable from the start so the game needs to give limitations and introduce some fun unique mechanics that make you the player have to think outside the box. For example as you get larger you gain new abilities that can only be used while the monster is at a certain size so the game gives you these pools that allow you to drop biomass and play as a smaller version. 
Many of the puzzles require you to play around with your mass and use multiple abilities that will leave you scratching your head. For a Metroidvania title, these are some of the best puzzles in the genre that I've ever played. Combat is pretty interesting, since you are technically the boss, you are clearly the most difficult thing to kill on the screen, but when you are met with a small group of army people, you can go down quite quickly. This requires you to be a bit more tactical in your approach, and sometimes the best plan of action is to avoid combat at all costs. I personally never chose this route, but it is definitely an option. Enemies progress wonderfully throughout the game, and although there are technically no bosses in Carry On, there are certain threats that raise the alarm more than others, like giant mechs and drones. The more you see those threats, the more cautious your approach should be. Since humans are easy for you to kill, learning how to pick them off one at a time is very useful and will help you maintain your monstrous size. Each of the areas are pretty grand and offer lots of fun gameplay, and thankfully saving is generous. Each new place that you infect serves as a save point, and there are like 3 to 6 per area in the game, so you shouldn't have to worry too much about dying and losing much progress as you play. In terms of audio, the soundtrack in this game is damn near perfect for what it's supposed to be, and it is made even better by the simplistic use of screams, clanging metals, and gooey flesh rolling around the screen. The whole experience truly feels like you're playing a horror movie as the bad guy. The haunting music is expertly done and reminds me so much of music from John Carpenter's The Thing. Do you see a theme here? And each new area presents a growing horror soundtrack that evolves alongside the monster. It is truly incredible. In terms of visuals, Carry On visuals are also nothing to scoff at. These are some beautiful bit graphics, and it is amazing to think that in 2020, developers can still find ways to do unique and interesting things with the pixel style. Not only that, but lighting, wind, and water effects are surprisingly great for a title of this caliber. Each time I encountered an area with these elements, I was blown away by the attention to detail and how much more authentic it made those areas feel despite the graphical limitations. Performance wise, I did not experience any problems, the load times between sections is fast and there was no stutter or hiccup in sight during my 17 hours of gameplay. In terms of value, as you may be able to tell from what I've said so far, Carry On is of monstrous value. Speedrunners will be able to knock this game out in roughly like 5 to 6 hours, maybe less, but casual players will enjoy a solid 10 plus hours of fantastic Metroidvania gameplay. This is a title that excels in just about every area and is truly one of a kind in the gaming world. For 20 US dollars, this is the absolute right price for the package that you're buying. It's also worth noting that there is a physical version, well a couple of physical versions, one from Special Reserve Games and one from Limited Run. You can pre-order these on the 24th on their website. Overall, Carry On is a masterful experience in reverse horror where you play as the monster and ultimately the threat to humanity. The story is simple yet intense, the gameplay is loads of fun despite its quirkiness at times, and the sound and visuals are top notch and I am finding it rather difficult not to recommend this game. With 2020 going the way it is, now is the time to cheer for the monster. It is a 9 out of 10. Alright, many thanks to Jason for reviewing this one. He really helps us out with this one. You know, Juan is on holiday, James is always mega busy, and I'm in the middle of recovering from dental surgery. So as you can probably hear, I'm not at my best right now. But anyways, many thanks to Jason. Plus, all of you who are watching right now, we really appreciate you guys. Plus, our YouTube members, our executive producers, Gannicus, Jonathan Rumor, God of Resin, Brent McLean, and Dane Wilkinson. Thank you ever so much. Be sure to check out some of our other content. We have lots to offer you guys. Uh, yeah, we'll see you guys next time. Take care.